What's up, backpackers and campers? Dave coming at you with another EP of Off Grid. I'm into backpacking, hiking, camping, and gear. And today I've got kind of a follow-up of a video that I did a little while back now, and that video was all about the gear companies that kind of missed the mark for me personally. Again, this is all subjective here, but those companies didn't quite do it for me. And um, you know, I figured, uh, why not? Literally, one of you. Thanks, Jason. You're awesome. Uh, ended up commenting and saying, like, it would be cool if you did one on the gear companies that you actually like. So um, here we are for that video. Um, so I have three main ones I'm going to talk about today. It is a little bit shorter of a list here, and I realize that, but these are really companies that um, I looked at holistically right you know there are a bunch of different companies that you kind of get like one or two things from that are kind of cool but these are the companies that i look at and i go like i can actually get like multiple pieces of gear from my kits um you know warmer weather um or colder weather um from right and then i have a couple of honorable mentions at the end as well for those companies that kind of fit into those smaller categories but let's dive into the three that i got for you tonight the first of which here i'm going to talk about is going to be let's go with C to Summit, the Australian, the Aussie brand, right? Um, there's a couple of reasons why I decided to put these guys on the list. The first of which is, you know, if you're talking about a comprehensive, like one-stop shop for a lot of different things, like, you know, if I only had to choose one company in order to pick the majority of my gear from, this is literally like one of the companies and this next one here that I would choose. And, um, you know, just look in their shop. I mean, especially with all of their kitchenware, uh, um, you know, your, your stove kit, your meal kit, right? Like all of that stuff, your, your pots, your pans, they have a bunch of great soaps, um, all those different things. Uh, a lot of the little like accoutrement, like accessory type stuff I really like uh, from them as well. They have some other, obviously like bigger ticket items as well. They've got the sleeping bags. They actually do have, I think one or two quilt options as well that I didn't even know they made quilts. And then obviously they have tents as well. Um, the reason why they're not gonna be my absolute favorite here is because they don't have any like non freestanding tents, any kind of like UL, like be able to use your trekking pole kind of tents. But the amount, just the amount of gear that they have is ridiculous. They make one of my favorite sleeping pads of all time, the Etherlite XT in the non-insulated version. Super comfortable pads. I think they have pillows that, you know, they have like, I, I have this little basin, right? That you can like wash dishes in. Like, so everything from car camping into, you know, backpacking, they, they pretty much got you covered outside of like a satellite device and like a water filter, right? Uh, pretty much everything else that you need, they have. I'm not sure if they have backpacks, but either, but I just thought of that one, I don't know why, but um, for pretty much everything else, um, they got you covered. So the, like from a holistic standpoint, and then they also have like really, you know, just quality gear, right? Stuff that kind of like holds up over time. So um, some decent innovation going on over there as well. The Spark sleeping bag is pretty popular as well. So first one up here is gonna be Sea to Summit. Um, I don't have a ton of their gear, but like I said, I have their pad. I have a bunch of their like kitchen accessories. I do have that like little basin um, that I'll use for like a hobo shower when I'm out in the field for my longer treks. Um, uh, me and my wife use their soap sheets too. They work really well as well. So a lot of different cool uh, items that you can find in their shop. And you can get, you know, discounts here and there. I think they like often have like a sign up for 10% off kind of thing on their site. So that's pretty cool. The next one that I'm going to talk about here is going to be, let's skip over what is going to be my ultimate favorite. And I kind of laugh and you'll, you'll kind of know why uh, once, once I get to them. But skip over them and go to my uh, other option here. And it's going to be Gossamer Gear. Now, it's sort of like a love-hate for me and Gossamer Gear. I was very attracted to them. My buddy uh, Jared, a.k.a. Snackbox, who's a regular on the Gear Holics podcast with me, um, kind of got me introduced to their Gossamer Gear, the one tent when we went on our Smokies trip a couple years back. And, um, you know, started looking into them. They have really great prices, uh, or I should say competitive prices for that kind of like middle ground type of uh, camping gear. Um, decent designs on their tents and their backpacks. So I ended up picking up both. So I ended up getting the Mariposa backpack and the GG1 tent. And uh, I think for the price point and the weight savings, particularly for their tents, it, they're actually really decent options. Where I kind of deduct points in that area is for condensation. I don't think it's a really great tent, not only for that all single 
the wall tents are gonna stink with condensation, but it's also like how it expels that condensation, right? It doesn't have the absolute best design there, but for the money and the fact that you can pick this stuff up on sale, usually at least like a minimum of 15% off or higher, um, it's actually a really decent price point. I think they start somewhere around like 300 bucks. I didn't pay that. I spent like close to $50 less for the tent. And then the backpack was somewhere around the same price point. And then again, I got that on sale as well. Not a fan of the Mariposa backpack. They recently went through a redesign on that one. I have a prior model of that one. And, uh, you know, I was out, out with my uh, coworker, Edgar, in Joshua Tree a year ago or so now. And um, didn't really handle the weight well, especially with the frame that comes with the pack. So I had that all loaded up and it was somewhere around 30 pounds and I was still getting shoulder pain, right? So, um, Kind of a love-hate with Gossamer gear. I also really like, you know, they have other things too. Their accessories are also really good. They have, um, you know, a sun umbrella that I really like. The accessories for their packs also work really well with their packs. I had the cell phone pocket, um, the water bottle pocket. Um, those work extremely well. They have the eighth inch foam mat that a lot of people end up picking up and liking as well. So a lot of different like cool accessories that will not break the bank either from them. Um, so that's what I kind of like about it. I also love the, the Gossamer Gear, the one uh, tent. Personally, I like the gear nest that they have up there, the two pole design. And then, like I said, it's kind of hard to beat from, you know, a price point perspective and the aerobic nylon that they use is pretty lightweight. So really like Gossamer Gear, um, but some of their stuff isn't quite polished, right? But they do make the list um, for the other, you know, positive reasons there. All right, I'm gonna get into my favorite right away before kind of rounding it out with the honorable mentions. Believe it or not, and I, you know, I kind of thought long and hard about this one and <laughs> kind of feel bad about putting them at number one, but number one has to be Z-Packs. Um, and the reason why I don't feel great about it is because I kind of wanted to hate them for a while. I even created a video on like, should you even buy the Z-Packs tent and was kind of, you know, uh, ripping on them a bit. And I, I still do because they're uber expensive, right? So for DCO, if anything, you're gonna be spending through the nose in order to, to shave off those extra ounces but the reason why they made the list here is for uh, other reasons that I've that I've mentioned for Sea to Summit and Gossamer gear they have really great accessories so definitely check out each one of these sites for their accessories um, z Pack has other things too like you know a bunch of different repair options for their stuff which you can kind of read into and go like well is it because their stuff breaks real easily not really but I really like the fact that if something does break I can easily patch it and repair it and their accessories aren't that expensive they have tent stakes repair kits uh, hats clothing other options like that beanies gloves socks um, and they work with a lot of other makers as well for like pots um, and other things to kind of round out the kit. So C where Sea to Summit kind of makes their own stuff, z -Packs kind of works with other companies to um, put other things in there. They have like, they work with Thermarest to put the Uber light in there, stuff like that, right? Um, so the reason why they kind of make the list is, first of all, I've never paid regular MSRP for any of my Z-Packs gear. Most of the stuff that I had, the bigger ticket items, I got at right around 50% um or a little bit you know um less than that i shouldn't say more than that less than that right um like 40 to 50 percent off is kind of what i got for those bigger ticket items otherwise i never would have bought it i don't think that you know a tent is really worth 600 plus dollars um and uh, i wouldn't spend money on that so i definitely think that you can pick up some decent deals hunt around on forums garage sales um, Facebook groups uh, or just word of mouth, right? Other people that you might know that are looking to sell it and you can get some pretty good deals on it. The other reason why they made the list here is because um, I was surprised with how comfortable their stuff really is. Um, and in particular here, it's going to be the Arc Hall. So I have uh, a couple of their backpacks. I got the Nero 38 DCF and then the Arc Hall in the Robic Nylon. And I was thinking, it's probably not gonna work, it's not gonna handle heavy loads that well either, and it actually rode really comfortable. So they do have some decent quality. Um, their quality is actually a little bit suspicious. I've heard it particularly with their quilts. I can't really speak to that because I don't have that and the stitching and whatnot on that, but I can say that the the packs definitely seem to be well made as well as the tents. There definitely seems to be a little bit more attention to detail on that one. So 
kind of put my foot in my mouth a little bit on them. Um, again, a little bit of a love hate, but you know, if I were to like just pick one place to like get all my stuff from, and if you now like price wasn't really uh, a factor here, then I would definitely consider them because they have you know quilts, they have your pads that you can get out of the shop, the packs, the some of the lightest tents and packs in the world that you can pick up, um, and it is decent quality. Like I think it'll last a, a decent amount of time, um, particularly if you can get it at, at a deal, right? So that's gonna do it for my top three. Let's get into uh, the honorable mentions real quick and wrap this one up. There's a couple of uh, quilt makers that have made it to my honorable mentions here. The first of which is going to be Underground Quilts or UGQ, and the second is going to be Enlightened Equipment. It's an honorable mention because I really like their Bandit quilt. I don't really see anything else that's attractive from them. They do sell, like sell like under uh, under quilts for your you uh, hammock uh, campers out there. And then they have, uh, you know, the Scully caps. They recently came out with a kind of a gimmicky thing like the, that they're calling a quillo, which is like a, a quilt slash pillow kind of thing that kind of transforms. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, so not a lot of innovation that's kind of coming out of them, but I do think they have a quality product and I really like their, uh, their bandit quilt. Their prices have have also gone up. I was able to score mine on a Black Friday deal and I, I haven't really noticed them running that or as steep of a discount lately. So kind of had to knock them a few notches down on that one. So I'd like to see a little bit more innovation from them and like new things kind of coming out of the uh, the pipeline because this next company here in Lightning Equipment is kind of tearing them up in that department. They have a lot of different options in their shop. I have their Apex uh, uh, Apex Revelation quilt at a 50 degree, which is their synthetic version. Reason why they made the list here for an honorable mention is they also have other um, you know, clothing options as well. Their, their Torrid pullover has become really popular. They have some wind pants. They have a decent balaclava that you can get from them uh, and just, you know, plethora of quilt options um, and customizations that you can do with them and they're often running garage sales as well so the volume there and the deals that you can get kind of edge out UGQ a little bit there so I can see why they're very popular and I'm enjoying the quilt that I have so far as well all right so that's gonna do it that's a, a quick roundup here of the gear companies that I actually enjoy versus or rather than the gear companies that have kind of missed the mark for me let me know your thoughts on all the companies that I mentioned in the comments down below. Do you like these guys? Do you not like these guys? Why do you like them? Why do you hate them? Uh, I want to hear all about it. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you're not a part of this community yet, please consider subscribing down below if you've gotten to this part of the video. I'd really uh, appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching again. And remember, if you headed off grid, make sure you do your research and make it a safe one. And I'll catch you on the next one.